Welcome to To Enable Help. This is the final video for teachers to manage their classroom and um, activities around being a teacher. So one of the things you'll notice on your dashboard is you have questions to mark and the only people who have questions to mark are in fact teachers. Okay, so if I go to questions to mark, this is again largely focused around uh, a practical assessment and I'm going to show you precisely how this practical assessment in particular is set up because it can be set up in multiple ways. A learner would go to enroll in the subject that you are mentoring and they would begin the step that they first step. And what we're doing in this practical assessment is we in fact saying to them, please will you print out this practical test and in fact they don't print it out, we give them a printed book and they have to go through and complete this practical assessment. So there's a crossword and there's questions and another crossword. And so we've got specific questions to mark. So there's question one and they might have, uh, for instance, that bar correct, that one incorrect. So there's an option out of four here, so they might get one out of four, two out of four, three out of four. So this is a specific practical assessment that they have to do, and it could be any activity. This is just happens to be the activity for this subject. So when we come to do a, a question to mark, if I was going to mark this person, I would obviously get their book and I would go through the marking guide. Did he get any questions correct? If you got no questions correct, there would be none, or you could have got four out of four. There are different solutions, and we can go through and capture the results based on what he's done. So if this was an essay, what we would have here was we would have the question, please write an essay, a 300 word essay on whatever the topic might be, and right beneath it would be the essay itself. So while we are reading the essay, we are able to mark the rubric that relates to this essay. Now it would be a different rubric, because the rubric is specific to the question. And um, so what we are able to do is deliver to every teacher a tool to mark um, the questions which are on the platform. And um, that is how a teacher then marks it. So for instance, this person I've now saved what they've done, I can save it and I can come back to the I can come back to this to this rubric. Okay, so if I were to go to a new one, the second one, you'll see there's nothing saved. But if I go back to the one that I did save, you'll see all my answers were saved. Only when you have selected completely marked every question, can you save and complete the question. So if I go back to this, to, you can see I cannot complete and save this because I have not co completed the rubric. Only when I complete the rubric, Will that button come up? So let me try and illustrate that to you now. There the button came up. That means I have done all the questions. I'm not going to save this, um, but going back to the person we were working on. So here, what I can do is, um, the other things I can do is I can print a marking template. And um, there's the rubric, which I could print out and I could use, I could go and visibly watch somebody do something if it was a if it was a practical where they were for instance having to ride a bike um, I could message the user and this allows me to send a user, a user feedback on this specific question that they have um, on the specific practical assessment and this remove button what it does is if a user has prematurely done this is called for a practical assessment you can remove it so um, without actually marking it. And by doing this, you'll f if you remember back to when we were analyzing results, depending on how learners answer this question, it actually gives the teacher feedback in their dashboard. And I'm, go and I'm going to take that step back so it's important to understand this. So in my classroom, if I go to view my classroom for Casterbridge, <laughs> and I do analyze and I pick the first week which is letter names you can see here our results for the practical assessment so I can see that 35% of the people got question 5 incorrect 
So it's fairly important that these are genuine rubrics that have been answered. So if somebody triggers a rubric to be answered and they're not ready to do the rubric, there's no point in, in as a teacher going through and saying not complete, not complete, not complete, because it'll skew that feedback to, to you as a teacher. So if I had to go through and say no answer is correct, just to try and delete this rubric off my list of rubrics, questions, rubrics to mark, I'm not doing myself a service. So I can remove it and it won't carry through these results. So it won't distort the graph that I'm relying on to provide further um, training to my class. So, the, so those are your options. Save allows you to save something halfway through. Save and complete is only available once you've marked every question and that's when you save it and you complete it and it disappears. You have marked it after this point. This prints out a marking uh, uh, template, which is the rubric itself. So you can take it away with you, complete it and come back and capture it. This prints out a question and answer, which is literally it's going to print out the question. Message user allows you to send a, a message to that user and uh, see Lucky Masinga in this case. And if Lucky's taken the assessment but wasn't ready to take the assessment and I don't want to distort what um, my results for the class, I can remove this. So it marks it, it gives it a zero mark and removes it from the, my marking list of uh, rubrics to mark. So that is how the questions to mark works. In terms of what triggers this, and I'm going to show you this because we're going to get demo users who take an assessment. So if I do music theory pre-grade one, and I do letter names, and I now do start question name. So technically the, we should have obviously been through all the content. And I now start this assessment. This is what is triggering that practical assessment. So you'll see here it says print out the practical assessment week one and complete and submit to your mentor for marking. There's a practical question. You'll be contacted to complete this questionnaire. So there's a the whole question. If, and if I submit this, exit. Okay, so I've su successfully submitted it. I don't think I'm, I can actually mark myself. But let's just see. I might be able to. Uh, it hasn't it hasn't been pulled through so it's not possible to mark yourself but in doing that assessment it triggers and it adds another line to this questions to mark space to say you need to now go and mark demo demo user but demo user can't actually mark themselves so demo user needs to be marked by another teacher but at least now you understand where this comes from it comes from a learner taking an assessment, the moment they take the assessment, it says this learner is ready for the practical assessment which is associated with that specific step. And it lands on the dashboard of the teacher who is marking, who is uh, teaching that learner. And then they can mark it. So um, while this thing loads, I'm hoping that that provides clarity. Um, in terms of some of the functionality that is available on the platform for teachers to mark either essays or practical assessments. Thank you.